Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, then you will get notified of new content as I release it. This was a request from a subscriber who asked me to review Gordon Ryan's wrestling and against Nicholas Marigali and Luke, who's also, a, these are all big guys. And this was in preparation for his match against Felipe Pena. And it didn't happen because Gordon came down with something and he's been fighting stomach ailments for a long time. And it just sort of put him over the edge. And let me tell you, this guy was very prepared. When you watch this video, you'll see. He first does a 30-minute match with Marigali. And it's not just wrestling. I mean, they do jiu-jitsu, but they start standing. And then he does a 10-minute match afterwards with Luke when he's exhausted. He was definitely prepared to go a very long time. What I'm going to do, like I do in all my breakdown videos, is I'm going to talk about his wrestling technique. I am in no position to comment on his jiu-jitsu at all. I will comment on his wrestling and Marigali's wrestling and Luke's wrestling. And actually, I'll comment on John's instruction just a little bit. Because what I want to teach you today a lot is about this push-pull philosophy. And that's when I create a situation where I push him and he has to push me back. And then when he pushes me back, I use his momentum against him. Okay. And so sometimes, you know, push pull philosophy doesn't always require the push. If he's pull, if he's coming into you, you allow him to come into you. Okay. So, and it's, a, it's something that makes all of these moves work in details that are often very much left out by most Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioners. And so I'll cover that today. I'm going to comment on the wrestling and this first match here is a 30-minute match with Nicholas Marigali. And Marigali is a very tough person. And what I'll do is I'll let the sequence play in fast, like regular motion. And then I will comment on what's actually happening. Okay, so right away, I kind of want to go back and talk about these two failed underhook attempts. So we'll play it at half speed here. Gordon gets this nice overtie. So he's controlling the wrist. He's not interlocking fingers, which I'll show you. Th uh, they do some interlocking hands by palm to palm. I don't like those. I don't like interlocking fingers, too. I've talked about that on my channel because it gives the guy the same position. The other problem with it is if you've ever wrestled anybody for international competition, when I wrestled against people from Europe, they're much better at it than we are. And uh, your fingers can take a beating in there. So I prefer not to do it. He is doing what I think is very correct to get an overtype position here. And what he does is he uses it to shoot the underhook. The problem is his head is so far away that this underhook is going to fail. It's going to be a failed attempt. And Marigali not even doing the appropriate defense, actually. Um, I can't believe I haven't showed it on my channel yet, but I didn't. <laughs> when I did the underhook uh, series, I should have done it then, but I didn't. The, this isn't the prop appropriate way to do it because when Marigali swims his arm back to the inside like that, it raises his elbow up, which is exactly – what the underhook is designed to do. And even though Gordon's head's way out of position here, he could have used that to throw it by and take the back. Now I know they're just starting and they're not at war or anything right now. Okay. Even though that's what this was called. Like they go to war. <laughs> they're not technically there yet. Cause they just started. But if Gordon's head had been in the right place, then he would have been able to take his back from there or do a bunch of other things that I show in my underhook series. But see when he shoots this underhook, so he's using the wrist grab to do it. Let's go back there and show you. See, he uses the wrist grab to do it, okay? But his head's way out of position. You want to shove your head into his, like, trap and then look towards his temple. And this is classic way of doing the underhook. It's what people have been showing for a very long time at all forms of wrestling. And it's, it's because you get in. I show this on my video number six, right? The underhook series, because it controls the whole inside position of the guy. Can't get his arm out. You get step in the middle and he can't uh, He can't headlock you. It stops a lot. He can't uchimata you. He can't headlock you. His wizard's essentially useless. All of those things. But when you pull your head away, all of a sudden, uh, you don't have control now because you're only your arms anchored in there and your head's way down here. Now, people comment on my page all the time about, well, not all the time, but they do about the Iranian underhook. And when they say that, I know that's that they don't understand it. 
Okay, because the Iranian underhook is a very specific thing that's for international wrestling. And I talked about this on Nikki Ryan's video uh, where he was wrestling with J-Rod. And it's designed to push people out of bounds to get uh, a push-out point in international wrestling. And then the guy has to push you back. And so, uh, or he's going to get scored on, right? And then you can do things from that. Now, that's going to fall into this push-pull philosophy. And the Iranian underhook's great for that. But you have to drop your head really low. You have to control his far arm. And it's more like a modified over-under position, but you're not giving him the under on his side. So he, you take away his underhook, and then you have a shallow underhook, and then your head's really low. It's not what's happening at all. Please stop commenting on the Iranian underhook on my videos because you don't know what you're talking about if you keep talking about it because none of these guys are doing it, and it doesn't make any sense to do it in jujitsu for a lot of reasons. But the classic way would be able to put your head right there in the, tri in the trap and then look into his forehead, and it would prevent him from getting his arm out. Okay, so that's the first time that he tries it. Okay, and then now um, he tries it again, and he does the same technique. Okay, and, and actually, he's got a better grip here. This is what I show on my on the far side, not this one. I hate it, but he's got a better grip on this side here, which is what I show in my video on how to do the outside single properly and not get stuffed. <clears throat> and it's because you can control this, and it's almost like a wrist lock if you push it down and into him. And then the only way he can get it out is to roll his arm outwards, which I talk about in that video. And then it gives you access to his whole side of his body. And I don't like this because you've given him the same grip it's a little better with Gordon has because he's underhanded, but it's just if you've ever wrestled internationally, you you know not to do these things because it, it's very terrible. It's just it's a good stalling technique, but it's not very good offensively. So anyway, so he <clears throat> uses his outside hand grab, which is great, and he does it again to shoot the underhook. But you see how far away his head is. There's nothing preventing him from getting his arm out. And so he's easily able to do it. OK, and that's why he lost it twice. All right. So in Marigali goes for a single, but the problem with that is he goes for a single while Gordon still has that hand grip. So I think if for nothing else, when Gordon has this, you know, Marigali's got to respect that. And he needs to like get that out of there. So he's got good, he's got good control on these wrists here. And Marigali goes in and pulls for this single, but he's still isn't going to really be able to control it. It's a good, it's a nice single. Okay. But it's, he has this too high here. So I've shown in my, if you watch my video on pressure on the thigh and running the pipe, then, you know, he would put his humerus across his thigh and he would still be able to do it when he got his hand lock here. Cause this, this now wouldn't be that big of a deal. It's still a problem. He should have never shot with it in the first place. And Gordon's got uh, a heavy collar tie here, which really, if you know what you're doing, isn't doing anything. It's just providing him balance. But it, it, there's nothing really offensively that he's going to be able to do from there. Um, if he was, if Marigali was pushing into him a lot, then he can do this. I forget what we call it in wrestling, but back in my day, everything had something to do with Schultz. <laughs> so you use like a wizard, you go under that pocket right there and grab your own. Then you grab your own wrist and then you can put the foot in the crotch and lift and throw them. I forget what we call it in wrestling, but I can show it on my channel if I want. It only works, though, if the guy's pushing, which is exactly why I teach you that as soon as you get the leg up in the air, that you start running the pipe, which you're going backwards, and you circle towards the guy's heel, which means you circle to the front. Does that make sense? So if I'm pushing him, he can bounce on his toes. But if I pull him and uh, and I circle to the front, then I'm pulling him to, towards his heel, and he'll lose balance. And then this will become useless. And then I've shown other ways where you can flick this off, take the back, that kind of stuff. Okay, But Marigali just sort of abandons it. Not sure why he did, but he did. Okay. So there, Ryan does it again. So he's the reason his underhooks aren't working, this is the third failed attempt, is he's not doing it in a classic way that's been taught in wrestling for forever. Um, while he's getting to a waist grab, he's leaving this all this space open for Marigali to get his arm out. What he the A good way to do it is to pull the head down and shoot the underhook and shove your head right there. Right. And then he won't be able to swim that arm back in. Not the way he's doing it. He has to do it a different way, which I haven't shown yet. So that's three failed uh, underhook attempts. He actually does it exactly like his brother does. It's like genetic. <laughs> so let's look at it again. Okay. 
just one more time. I want to show you. See, his posture is what's affecting him. So he, just like his brother, he leans really far. And when he goes to dig his underhooks, that's why they're that's why they're not happening. OK, um, that wasn't the best angle. The ones from before were better, but he's but it was a better angle for showing his back, how he leans. And, and that's not what you want to do. And the classic sense would be to pull on his head downwards and shoot the underhook and shove your head right into his like trap and then look towards his forehead. So there's a good sequence coming up here in a second. So that's something I like that he's been doing lately is when he doesn't like the tie and like what's happening, he likes to off balance people a little bit by shoving the, by using his feet. So if you watch here, see, he takes this inside foot and he kicks it out. See, and he uses a collar tie and it really breaks he caught Marigali essentially leaning on this leg and this leg was light. And then he used his collar tie to just sort of off balance him. And for nothing else, it's just getting him out of position, which is good because if his head's down like that, you know, then he could have grabbed the chin and front headlock and bring him down to the mat. Right. And then take the back, which is something I like to do from there. Okay. See how he keeps getting this. <clears throat> this is all because Marigali's reaching. He's just sort of reaching, you know, he hasn't been wrestling very long. And he keeps catching that hand on the way in and right to it again. See, so this is four, number four, because of his posture and his lack of head position, too much space here. Okay. Now it's better here. Let's play it through. It's better here than it was because he is up higher and he was able to get the, the, the trap a little bit better and his leg, see how he stepped in. So I show this on my video number six, see how he's, he's stepping in. So he's uh, being able to control some of his posture here. He could step in even deeper if he wanted, um, but he still needs to get his head in there. Okay. Now what ends up happening here is pretty cool. He does an inside bump, goes to a knee tap, comes up around the trap so that he doesn't get wizard hard. And then he takes it to the mat nice roll through stays with that stays with that uh underhook far side knee tap which is pretty cool and for big guys that was really impressive uh the amount of athleticism there so let's go back and watch it again but in slower speed all right let's go through this again at half speed so his head's out of position but his hip is in better position so i think it's harder for marigali to back out and then what he does is he uses this inside bump, right? He's not really trying to do a inside trip because you can't inside trip to the underhook side. I mean, I don't know if he knows that or not, but you can't. I show that on my channel. But what he is doing is something that we learned in wrestling. And then I also did it in judo is like you inside leg bump and then you go to the knee tap, which is exactly what he's going to do. So he off balances them this way. And then he goes to the knee taps. So this is very classic wrestling and a good job of doing it. And right here, right, because he didn't get Marigali to run over to his back with that far side knee tap, and he's getting close to the out of bounds, and I think he's very aware of it. He drops down to this single here, and then he actually comes up around the trap. Well, let's see exactly where he did that. Okay. Um, when does he drop to the single? I think it's when he realizes that it's not working. <laughs> yep, because here he is going to the far side knee tap, and he's running him over. And then here he switches to the inside single, which was actually a very good classic wrestling. What I, as his coach, if I were his coach, which I'm not, what I would like for him to do is to now drop to this single since he's so far lost the position <clears throat> because of a few th reasons. Number one, he can't go to the cement mixer that I showed right on my channel, right from the dog fight position um, because Marigali has got inside control with his leg here and he can't um, go to the Greco body lock, which is another good option. If you can get somebody down, except the problem is with this, with, with this sort of position. But the issue is, is that because he's not stepped to the inside and Marigali has inside position, that's gone. So really his only option left uh, would have been to drop down to the single use it to pull him back and dive on the far knee. And then you can get to the back sometimes quite often from there, but if nothing else, now you just go to your passing. So that's not what he did though. And that's okay because uh, Marigali's overhook isn't as powerful with him up here. Although now he's sort of trapped 
right? So if he had dropped down to the single when he had him, uh, when he had his balance way off and he had his knee on the floor here, that made this so easy to pick this up, drag it back, dive on both legs. Okay. That would have been a nice thing to do to manage the out of bounds, which is something you really need to uh, consider when you're doing jujitsu or wrestling, uh, because there's no point in doing all this work to have no return for it, you know? And so you need to know where the out of bounds are and you definitely, and you can, you can use the out of bounds to score very well. I, and my J rod and Nikki Ryan video, I actually show a J rod, was knowledgeable of the out of bounds and used it very well to score. So I also have some videos on how to score near the out of bounds if you're interested in that. So watch this. The, I do like what he does here because I would have taught my guys to drop to the single or down like up in the crotch using this exact same um, hip motion that he does here. So see how he drives his hip in here? So he's got – this is a whole – going back to the push-pull philosophy because he's got Marigali bent over at the waist and Marigali is actually pushing into him here. And then what he does is he waits for Marigali to sort of stand up a little bit. See how it's Marigali doing the motion. It's not Gordon. Gordon's not moving. Marigali is, and he feels that, and then he goes with it. And then, so he hips in really hard, and then he drops down, and then it brings him to his back. Now, the the he's around his waist, and the only reason – that I've been for the last 20 years teaching this is because I've seen so many people lose moves when they stay here. And it's because if you wrestle against somebody who's really tough and really athletic, um, they can do a split and then you'll never, you'll never get the takedown because as they go down, they actually can do a split. And, you know, it's really frustrating because you can't, you can't circle around them. But in this position, if you were to come either to the crotch or to the far knee, then you can really secure the position when you hit the ground and finish it. And so he he does a great job hipping in and keep in mind, they're 230. He's 230 freaking pounds. So regardless of what Craig Jones says, I think Gordon's extremely athletic for a 230 pound guy, you know, because I know he said that about him, like, oh, he's not that athletic. And I'm like, the hell he isn't. He's more athletic than any heavyweight I've ever coached. And so he brings him to the mat. Marigali's got this great inside position here with the butterfly sweeps him and then Gordon goes with it. See, that's extremely important to know when to go with things in both wrestling and in jujitsu, right? And so he goes with it, right? Helps him again, push pull philosophy is Marigali's idea to, to move right when he was hip uh, sweeping him over. So he goes with it and helps him and then stays on the leg. And what's smart about this position from here is when he does this is that uh, Marigali is around his neck. So instead of trying to turn it into a double and go that way, he does what's more of like a crackdown position. It's not really a crackdown because you would double up on your hands here, which is probably what he should have done to be honest. Cause if Marigali knew more about wrestling, he would sprawl. He would, he's in prime position to stuff his head, cover it with his hips and sprawl. And then, you know, but since it's jujitsu, Gordon would just pull guard after that, which would be, you know, fine. But, but if we're just talking about wrestling technique, that would have been a better option for him than to stay up on the waist on the far side. But either way, he drives in, okay, and he comes up to the waist here. And now it's sort of like he was where he was earlier, right, where he's got the far side knee tap underhook, right? And so he just uses it, which honestly, a lot of times in wrestling, you just use what you got. And then they end up on the ground. And then now this time he doesn't get rolled. He sinks his hips down nicely. And now that they're going to go ju do jujitsu and I will not go outside my lane and talk about their jujitsu other than to comment how beautiful it is, which I'm not going to do because you're here to hear his wrestling. Actually, before going to the next sequence, let's go through this again in fast motion. And I can talk to you about what I just saw. Okay. Again. So he goes there, failed underhook, heads out of position. Okay. Uses that collar tie. Off balance him a little bit, which is pretty cool. Goes to underhook again this time. Head still out of position, but he goes to the inside trip, right? Or inside bump knee tap, right? They come here. He hips in really hard, takes him to the mat. Marigali butterfly sweeps him over. He goes with it, stays on the far side knee tap, finishes the takedown. Ends up in a good position to do high quality jujitsu, which is what he's world famous for. Garagali says something to him uh, to the effect over here of like, oh, he only got 29 minutes left, <laughs> you know, and uh, believe me, I mean, this guy's very tough, man. He has no problem uh, rolling hard and it's great for Gordon. So kind of classic collar ties. So they they got to get uh, out of this habit of leaning like that um, because it sort of telegraphs everything and it doesn't really help. You want to have much more of a square stance like I show in my video. You don't have to 
you don't have to stand as low, but you, if you have some flex in your legs and you keep your back straight, the guy doesn't know which direction you're going to go. Okay. And generally speaking, <clears throat> I don't like this overtie unless you're right away going to Gordon would, that would be, would be to come and pop the elbow and shuck him by. Okay. Um, he has to be pushing for that to work, but in order for you to get him to push, you need to push into him. And then you, and then as he's pushing by with his collar tie, like he should be able to, because he's got inside control, then you go to the overtie and shuck him by. Okay. So otherwise I don't like the overtie because it's, there's nothing stopping Marigali from just dropping to a single leg there. Although he does have hand control here. So he needs to stop giving him that. Okay. So then they, all right, let's see. Okay. Yeah. This is a nice little sequence here. So let me play, let me stop it. Uh, I just want to show you the drag and then I'll show you what Marigali could have done to defend it, but show you how Gordon gets to it, which is actually pretty nice. Very classic drag. I don't know what's up with the cameraman. He's like drunk or something. Um, <laughs> but so Marigali has this over tie right position here. And that's what Gordon uses to, to drag and then chase to the back. Generally speaking, I don't teach it that way because it's a it's it's an athlete. It relies on athleticism. All right, so let's go back to that real quick. Really hard to show this in slow motion with the freaking camera going all over the place, but I'll just try to move it frame by frame. Maybe that'll work better. But you see here, when Gordon goes to the drag, he does a good job blocking off the. Uh, using his chest to block off the the arm god dude this cameraman was just like freaking all over the place let's see if we can so here when he drags <clears throat> before he does it see how he passes the arm by so marigali has got the over tie on the wrist and gordon just uses that because he's pushing again push pull philosophy uses it comes up in the armpit like like they're taught okay and then he turns and covers it well with his chest now marigali goes to run which is not the appropriate thing to do the the appropriate thing to do would have been would be to marigali to go right to his own tricep step in the middle and redrag i do that all the time on people they try to drag me i redrag them and then i do it the way that i told that i showed you on my proper way to do an arm drag which is a greco thing okay this isn't there's nothing wrong with this people do this all the time the the there's nothing wrong with what Gordon's doing, and I want to make that clear, okay? This is a very classic way of doing an arm drag, and he does it better than most people because most people, and I hate when they teach it that way too, most people teach uh, people to step to the side, which is horrible because you just give more space. Gordon does not step to the side, okay? he, In fact, he actually sticks his leg out and blocks that leg uh, as like a trip a little bit, and that's what actually sort of makes Marigali so go for run. So in other words, it looks like, never mind. It looks like Gordon actually created that motion. And the beauty of it is that now that his arm's trapped, this is a side body lock that you can do. I know people think like, oh, I, I hate the side body lock. Dude, I've used it too. And I end up in there sometimes, but my, I was just trying to mention that a side body lock when the guy has a whizzer is a very dangerous position for both people. And you don't want dangerous positions for both people. You want to have positional control. And now that his arm is blocked here, now he's in a lot of trouble. There is no Uchimata. There is no sagging headlock. There is no Makikomi, which I haven't shown on my channel, but that's the third and the last thing that you basically have if your arm was out. But because Gordon's trapped his arm, he doesn't have that at all. And then so he gets to his back. Um, and I, I prefer very traditional mat returns, but he is 230 pounds. So, there, you know, that's harder to do when you're big. And Marigali basically lets him get both legs in, but then he rolls through. Which is one of the cooler things about jujitsu and something that's really turned me on to jujitsu, like since I've been doing it, um, that when I first started, I was like a wrestling purist. But then I'm like, you know, it's kind of cool that instead in wrestling, you're limited in that position. You got to get the legs out. You can't roll to your back in wrestling. You know, that would be the worst thing ever uh, for the scoring system. So but in jujitsu, you can. And it took the legs out. And then it put Marigali in a good position, you know, to to do jujitsu, which is just so cool. It's what makes jujitsu really cool is, is that you can play offensively from many different positions, right? So anyway, so um, so okay, let's go on to the next sequence because I'm not going to talk about their jujitsu because they're too damn good for me to comment on it at all. I know my place and I stay in my lane. All right, let's talk about this sequence here. This is the next sequence. We'll play it through at regular speed and then we'll slow down. Okay, interlocking fingers. I hate it comes up to the waist i hate it that gives you uchimata especially if you have the far arm 
He's forced to go to a side headlock here, which he almost used properly, but then he gives it up. Okay, so let's go to let's watch that again, but at uh, half speed. Okay, so like I said, this doesn't give you anything. It's 50 50. Bad idea. Don't do it. Okay. The, the first thing that you should be doing, plus you see how far his elbows are out. Gordon's better at tucking his elbows in. See how far Marigali's elbows are out? That's why Gordon keeps being able to shoot the underhook. Okay. And you never push from an inferior position. And he's able to get that other arm out, or Marigali is. He's able to get that other hand out. But that's honestly probably because Gordon let him, because it's really hard to get out of those interlocking finger situations. It's not an advantageous thing. So here, there's only a few fingers that are interlocked. Um, but it, and in, because he keeps shooting, so Marigali has made this mistake multiple times now where he keeps shooting when Gordon has c hand control there. It's another reason why I don't like it. You know, he's got superior hand control because he's got the – he's underhanded, and he doesn't have to use hardly any energy here. Every time that he shoots, he's just sort of – you know, try it. You know, I mean, if you – with an underhanded position like that because your elbow can be locked into your side, you have a tremendous amount of power because your body's behind it. and. Marigali shoots again with with his hand being controlled, and, and Gordon lets go of it. Now I don't know how long they've been wrestling here, but it's or fighting, but it's been a long time. And this is a thirty minute match, and still, you know, decent technique from some big guys. Okay, I don't want you to walk away from this thinking that I'm, you know, commenting everything that they do sucks because it's not bad. Okay, uh, because you see his back is in decent position here. You know, he puts the leg in between here. He's got a decent position, and at some point which he shouldn't have done. He abandons it and goes for the, for the waist grab. And you would think with all that they've been wrestling that he realizes how many, how many times he loses the position from that. Um, so yeah, he's around the waist now. When you're around the waist like that, and you've only got one hand on this guy's strong leg, there's not a whole lot holding it there. And there's too much energy being expended. Okay. Plus his head's out of position. Where his head should be is in the ribs. I know a lot of people should teach it up in the chest, but it, it extends your arms too much. Okay, so it's actually not correct to have it that high. Now he comes to, to the waist grab, right? And then now what's going to end up happening is, is that, and I've covered this on, I covered it before ADCC. And then it happened a lot in ADCC. So then while I was watching it, I, I decided that I would make a video on it from all the times that I saw people get into this position. And actually Marigali did a great job defensively from that position, but watch what Gordon does. He times it, right? So he lets him come in, watch Gordon's hips. Okay. He's pushing Marigali's pushing Gordon lets him push into him. Right. And then he bumps him hard with his hips. That's what's making Marigali fly. It's the leg. And then the overhook here. Now, if once these guys get better at doing this, and I hope that they will at some point is taking Gordon should control his elbow. Very easy to get a hold of his elbow there. When he does it, he'll be able to flip Marigali to his back and then end up in Kesagatami because his arm would be over top of the neck in that situation. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. And, okay, so he uses basically like a we, – we in wrestling don't call it Uchimata. Just call it a wizard. And then, you know, that this is the effective way of how you use a wizard. A wizard is ineffective if you're down on his leg. I covered this multiple times on my channel. I cover it on channel on the video number two, where I show how to finish the outside single. And then again, in the dog fight uh, where I talk about it quite a lot about where now they're not, they're standing, but it's not all that different um, where if he, if Marigali had stayed on the legs, there is no wizard. There is no Uchimata. It doesn't happen. Okay. So he ends up here. And then now that there's a lot of now see Gordon keeps inside control with his hip, right? It's a proper thing to do because actually, and this is where, I've talked about this a lot on my channel. See how far away Marigali's hips are? Right when they got up from that position, that's when it is freaking sagging headlock city, if not Harai uh, Goshi. And in, in, in Division I collegiate wrestling, the majority of my pins came from this almost exact position where I pulled somebody up around the waist. They didn't do it willingly. They shot in. I stuffed their shot. I pull them up around the waist. I whip them over really hard. They end up in this position. And then right when they're trying to pop up, I would take my arm, go to the far elbow. This becomes 
the headlock arm, right? So the overhook arm, because you see how close he is to actually going down. He's got nothing stopping it. There's nothing stopping him from headlocking the freaking daylights out of him and ending up in his back. And I'm tired of people telling me how Casey Gatami is easy to get out of, because that means that nobody is who knows who's putting you in. It knows what they're doing. I put people in Casey Gatami all the time and very few people can do anything about it. If you know how to do Casey Gatami, then it's very difficult to get out of that situation. If, and it's very tiring, even at, for nothing else, it's very tiring and shitty for him. So this is the proper time to do it. His hips are far away. And this is either, this is, this is where I would do the sagging headlock, not Harai Goshi, but the sagging headlock, grab the far elbow and sit through baseball slide through because he won't be able to wrap your legs up because your baseball sliding through and your legs are coming way out here. And then your leg underneath the neck goes way far out like a split. So he can't roll you. And then you just make him miserable down there forever long you want. Okay. So they're still back in this position, right? They come up and now Marigali switches to the side headlock. I show this on, which video did I show that on? I'll have that. Well, I'll link it where I show the side headlock from the ground. Right. And what he should have done because he had his leg on the inside here, Marigali, that is, is Marigali could have taken that inside leg and wrapped it around his calf and and then hipped in and rotated towards the camera. And it would put Gordon right on his back in a pretty crappy position with sort of like a side headlock, uh, like a head and arm sort of finish. Okay. So then this is the next sequence that's right after it. We'll do it in normal speed. So you can see all day long he's been reaching for that underhook with him leaning to the side. And and part of the problem with doing this, okay, for, from a wrestling perspective, is for the other reasons that I've told you, you can't secure the underhook. But the but one of the other problems with it is see how when you're leaning like this, is that the weight is really not on the front leg all that much because he's walking forward and he's sort of leaning and the weight's gonna be on this leg that it makes it easy to get it. Now the problem with Marigali, he twice today was able to grab that lead leg, but when he did it, he was doing it when Ryan still had hand control. So he can't let Ryan have hand control or else that won't work. And the other thing is, you know, he had it way too high, so he didn't have any pressure on the thigh, so he couldn't run the pipe, et cetera, et cetera. But that's one of the only things that I would, uh, the last thing I would comment on that is why that's a bad position. But, you know, uh, Gordon doesn't really care because he stuck his leg out there <laughs> for both Nikki Rod and for uh, Andre Galvo uh, in the in the finals in the ADC and then the super fight because he could care less if somebody takes him down to the ground, okay? So you also have to keep that into consideration. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about it from the wrestling perspective and what's wrestling, proper wrestling technique that does translate to jiu-jitsu very well. I know that it does, and John knows it too. And But the... But, you know, and if you're as good as Gordon is on his back, he really doesn't care if it ends up there. Right. It seems like lately he's been using wrestling to wear people out and uh, which is also a good strategy. And and when we see him go up against Penna one more time, we'll be able to see how how much it's evolved. I think it's evolved quite a bit. OK, so. Let's play through and see what happens here. I think this is the end of the match. Yeah, I think so. Oh, no, that's right. He does that. All right, we'll play the sequence all the way through, and then we'll slow it down because a lot actually goes on here. They're tired, so getting out of position, but waist grab, terrible. And then now Gordon does, which uh, that's a really cool, uh, he's getting good at using his hips, which I like a lot. And then now John's actually telling him, okay, now you have a 10-minute match right afterwards. <laughs> okay, so let's back that up here. Right, we'll start it from here because all that other stuff was the same song and dance of kind of not very good, not very good uh, tying situations and Marigali getting stuck with this hand grab thing and trying to do off stuff offensively from it, which he really shouldn't be. Because, I mean, I, I admire that he's tough and that he just keeps coming at Gordon Ryan, which is really getting Gordon in really good shape for Penna. But you can see that he doesn't wrestle or hasn't wrestled very much because you can tell he's tough, but because he's making, you know, a lot of classic mistakes, but that's fine. So anyway, so, so um, we know he doesn't, we know he doesn't have a lot of wrestling experience. So here he goes to the waist grab. 
And I believe that he stepped to the side, which is a no, 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 no. And yes, where is this? Yes. Okay. So he <clears throat> is behind Gordon's leg. Okay. So Gordon's leg is on the inside. So he's not in a side body lock position, but it's not far from it. Okay. And then now let's watch what Gordon does. Cause I think this is pretty cool. Cause you know, see Gordon is, has been pressuring down wizarding that whole day, all day long. And, and you got to keep in mind we're all match long and you got to keep in mind that that's actually uh, going to have an effect on how Marigali reacts. Right. So he pressures down. And then Marigali starts standing up again, push pull philosophy. It's Marigali's idea, right? To 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 sort of stand back up with it, and because he doesn't like being pressured down. And Gordon gets his foot under, so his legs on the inside of Marigali's. Right, he stepped on the outside, so it's one is Marigali's pinched on his leg, and Gordon takes his foot and sticks it underneath. See how he he puts his foot is is on the backside here, and he's going to use that. As like a trip while he comes to the near leg here. I forget what we call this in wrestling. Man, I really forget it. I want to call it a Merkel. I don't know if that's the right name for it. I want to call it the Merkel, though, for some reason, but it doesn't matter. See, this is the problem with having, you know, different names of for the same wrestling moves over many years. And I've been in it for 30. You start getting confused about this, the stupid name of it. Probably better. It's probably better if it just if the name was to say exactly what it does, like how Japanese does for judo, right? Judo moves are named like after what they do, like, and <laughs> Merkel has nothing to do with the name of, or the name of that has nothing to do with the action, <laughs> but either way. Okay. So he, he uses it to hip in again, just like he had done earlier, uh, but from a slightly different position here, right? Where he hips in and he traps the inside leg and he's got the far leg trapped with his, with his own foot. And then now they go, they topple backwards. So then that's the end of that match. And then uh, John is now calling them for to wrestle a 10 minute match right afterwards. So now he's got Luke. Look at how big this guy is. I mean, you know, these are really big guys. And I have to say they move very, very well for big guys. It'd be a lot of fun to train. So, uh, yeah, they just keep they just keep giving it to him, you know, and John's actually teaching it. I'll show it to you later, which is why they're all doing it. But don't do it if you're you're not them. Just don't because <laughs> it's just now you're stuck. You know what I mean? Like if you don't give it to them and you could you can they they start reaching out. You can easily just, you know, dig for inside control, put your head in the right place. And say he, he went to go do it again. And when he pulled his head away. Well, I should probably do it at fast speed first and then we can do it. But let me just let me just show you this little sequence here. So. Right from the hand grab, Gordon, clearly this is something that he works on a lot, right? He has that. He has that hand and he's going to try to shoot the underhook. And then because he pulls his head away, this what's the deal with this cameraman? When he goes to do it, he drops his elbow, which blocks him at the elbow and shoots his own underhook. And look where his head is. And that's why it works. So now he gets his own underhook. Okay, so that was pretty slick. But he doesn't step in. See, there's way too much space here. You can't have this space happen. So let's just play full motion, see what happens. So he's not stepping in. So if he if he wanted to keep that because he had it here, see how far his hips are? How do you expect to keep an underhook with your hips that far away? And how do you expect to keep it when your head is? It's all arm. It's all muscle. There's no technique being used here, really. Although now look, though, still Gordon still has a far hand. So, you know, no, none of these guys are going to be able to do anything if they accept that and give him that, give him this grip, you know. So he has this underhook, heads out of position, needs it's on the right side. But it needs to be right there. And then he needs to have this leg really close up so that he's up under his hips. And when it's very difficult to back up when you're up underneath somebody's hips. Okay, watch video number six and you'll see I teach that a lot. I also teach it from the defense of the Russian. Okay, so he loses it. Let's see how Gordon did the – I'm just curious to see if he did the proper underhook defense or if he just sort of squirreled out of it. Just curious. Because you see, he was able to get a collar tie with it because it because that's how that's how far away Luke was uh, from it. So if his head had been up there really close, none of that would have happened. Actually, I no see Gordon did do it the proper way. Okay, so this is pretty close to what I would end up teaching. What, what and I'll show I'll make you a video. Okay, of how I do it, but but he actually is the way he's so when Marigali was doing it, he was trying to swim his arm in, and the way that Gordon's doing it. See how he's sliding his elbow down and then and then he ends up 
he's using it as a collar tie, but what he could do is just get his own underhook. But you see how when he's, once he slips there, there is no more underhook. And now that forearm is on his collarbone. And so there's nothing that he'll be able to do about it. Okay. So then he, he just accepts it. I think, I mean, Gordon's got to be tired after fighting a, you know, rolling with freaking Mirigali for half an hour. That was a, and that was a fight. I know people say, don't call jujitsu fights. Well, yeah, well, that was a fight. Okay. Pretty much. That was a, that was a battle. So he, I think he just does his fake uh, shot here because he wants to drop Luke's head so that he can go to a, a front headlock because you see how he tries to back out and do it. And then Luke kind of gives him a taste of his own medicine there. Let's look at it in slow-mo. Right, so, but you see what happens. I want to show, this is, talk about a push-pull philosophy and a perfect example of, of when to show it. So, Luke gets this underhook, and he's feeling very confident about it. His head's actually in good position here. Really far away, though. So, he starts running, but he gives Gordon inside control with the hip. So hopefully now when you hear me talk about this stuff, you realize that I'm I'm coming from a place of knowledge on this stuff and over many years. When I talk about inside control, the hip being important, here, here's why. Because Luke has great position with this underhook for the most part, and his head was in good position. But he ex he gives Gordon inside position with his hip, and watch how Gordon lets him come in. This is the push-pull philosophy, right? It's like – this guy's pushing, and Gordon lets it happen. He comes into him, and then watch his hip. Bang. Watch this lift. See how his foot comes behind it? And he, and he see how he, he wrapped the underhook? Or, sorry, overhook, right when he did it? So watch. He turns his hip. He lets him come in, and then whack, lift. Now, this ought to show you, okay, because this is technique here. You're not throwing a gigantic – I gather that Luke is as big as him. This guy's got to be close to 230 pounds. You ain't lifting a guy like that with just pull, you know, pulling him. He's not pulling him. He's letting it's – Luke's, it's Luke's idea to push here, and Gordon's just letting him do it. And that's how wrestling works. It's how all the throws work. It's how all the traditional shots happen after the push. Like I have a video on that. I push the guy first. He starts coming into me. I let him come into me. Right. And then I use his energy against him. Gordon did that. This beautiful right here is one of my favorite things that he did the entire the entire time because of of the timing of it, pun intended. Watch this again. Whip. Right. Takes away now what Luke had. Now he comes to a nice Greco headlock if he used it correctly. But see the the. He's got his arms are doing the right thing and his head's doing the right thing, but his hips are doing the wrong thing. When you get this Greco headlock, you step deep and you step underneath, you step between his legs deep because when you go hip to hip and what that does is that when the guy's backing away now, you're under him. Right. And I show this on my my Russian video. When I'm underneath a guy's hips like that, I can lift a guy like Dom, who's 50 pounds heavier than me, like nothing. Right. And. And and it's the same from the body lock, or in this case the head lock. It's the same basic concept. And you, the way that I twist people to their back with the inside Greco body lock, it's the same exact concept, except you just have the head pinch here. Okay, and so he he should have taken Gordon to his back with this. That's what exactly what should have happened. Okay, because but he didn't have he didn't have inside hip control. See, so he, he gave it away. So his arms and his head are doing the correct thing. Wouldn't be too hard to correct this guy's wrestling now. Um, his you know, for some of the things he's doing, because his because one of the hardest things to get to solve with people is their head position. I find because they get those bad habits of pulling their heads away when they see how his underhook is great. I mean, he's got great head position. He's got a great underhook, but he's too far away. Look at how much space there is there. Right. And so he's not under him, which is what you do with an underhook. You get under him. OK. And so if he had stepped in, he would have had a lot more control. And that's just sort of. Uh, well, they're. I don't know how long, how far they were in here, but Luke has also had his own 30 minute match. <laughs> Even if it wasn't that hard, like Gordon was saying, it's still hard to wrestle for 30 freaking or roll for 30 minutes hard, right? These guys are in great shape though. So it's just sort of kind of like a, I don't know if Gordon snapped him down or if he just kind of took a bad shot. I think he kind of took just like a, yeah, he took a shot. And then Gordon tries to go to the cradle. 
Nice. So that's something I've seen Gordon use actually quite a bit. Again, push pull philosophy. He's he's using the guy's energy against him. So as he comes up, as he comes up, and Gordon's got this this overhook here. Watch this. You see his far leg. As Luke is coming up and his body's going that way, Gordon's allowing him to do it. He disappears, bumps knees, has a foot underneath it, and uses the collar tie to pull him that direction. So he's got kind of the claw. Now, if Gordon had, and he's got that, he's actually got it. He's got the underhook here. Yeah. I think this guy's really athletic, but this could have really, if he had kept, oh, he, he lost the claw. So if he had kept the claw here, then that would have that could have definitely resulted in uh, taking him straight to his back. Although from now he's sort of like in the cement mixer ish position, but he gets behind him even better, right? So let's back that up and just show that sequence one more time. Beautiful. Oh yeah, that happened real fast. Tries to tries to do a, a Gramby. I don't think they stay down here very long, so all this bullshit. Yeah, so I've been using this a lot too lately. It was what I I, I tried not to because I was like, oh, like I'm just wrestling people if I do it. But lately I've been doing this a lot, <clears throat> which is uh, using the near side cradle to set up stuff. And if they sit back, I sometimes could just guillotine when they if depending on what they do, you can guillotine the crap out of them from there. But Gordon's using it for positional control, which is perfect because that's exactly what you use it for in wrestling is you can take somebody's back from there. And perfect. That's very good. See, what Gordon did, which was smart, is if you watch this leg, say none of this is by accident. I'm, I promise you that nothing that Gordon is doing is by accident. See, look, okay. He's got the chin, which is exactly what you should be doing. It's beautiful. Um, he duck unders. Classic wrestling. I would, have, I would have told him to come in the crotch, but that's okay. Big guys usually don't do that. And then he steps over. Now watch this. Padlock. See this leg here? Padlock. This is this is all technique right here. And, and he's athletic, but this is all technique. You see that? That was thought through. You know what that prevents? This prevents Luke from being able to high leg over him and get on Gordon's back inside control. Because that was my first thought when I started watching this is like Luke could just high leg over. But if you look, he stepped over, so he can't do it. So Gordon's definitely been thinking this stuff through quite a bit. Let's just watch this one more time. So watch, steps over the padlock right here, prevents him from being able to high leg over. Now he's in the back position. Right, he's on the back. Man, they're like 40 minutes in right now. That's a long time, especially when you get like a new partner. Good good front headlocks on him. Okay. Okay, so well, let me play it through. Let's just play it through. So, yeah. So that could have been prevented there. Um, I, I see this a lot, actually, when I was coaching high school. So um, it, because people – and you got to keep in mind, fatigue, fatigue changes stuff. May it changes the way you think. So the, he did a pretty good job pulling him down here. Um, let's see. Personally, I circled the other direction. I think it's a it's better to circle the other direction, and, and I'll tell you why. So, actually, no, never mind. He's circling the right direction. Okay, yeah. So he see how he's got the chin, and he's circling essentially away from the chin. That's how I do it because it's the better handle. A lot of guys tell people to circle this way with this, and I and I completely disagree with it because it lets the guy to drag as you do it and drag hard. But no, Gordon's doing it proper way. That's proper classic wrestling technique right there. Sorry, I thought it was the other way around. I'm staring at the screen for a while. <laughs> no, so he does perfect. Okay, pulls the guy to the mat. The only problem that he, okay, so when he does that. Okay, be, uh, to, you want to prevent him from doing that, okay? Usually when I get somebody down to this position, what I start thinking about doing is arm dragging that and take the back. So, And and it's a little different than your typical arm drag way up in the armpit because you don't want him to be able to pull his elbow to his side. I have to show that on my video, but, but either way, it doesn't matter. Both ways work if you know how to cover it with your chest. But when he gets his arm up around there, you can't circle to the back. 
Okay, so so what you do is, is you either snap them back down, drag on this side, take the back, right? So you miss direction, right? Because then what now happens is he ends up in, you know, the dog fight. This is classic dog fight right here. Beautiful. That was a nice transition to a double. Yeah, this guy's this guy's this guy's got some talent too, man. You see how when they when he caught him standing straight up? Let's just go a little back a little bit more. Watch this. So he has this shoulder crunch thing. And he he doesn't waste any time. Drops to the double. That was nice. Yeah. Man, for big guys, dude, they'd be they'd be a blessing to work with. Um, I, I see how right hand a little high, a little too high on the hamstring. Usually you want it right on the on the kneecap. Okay, just just for just for point of clarification, it helps because when you drive across it, uh, it really bu it buckles better, right? Because when he sprawls, if this hand slides up, uh, then you're you're gonna lose the move. So does a great job finishing that. That was beautiful. It was a very nice little sequence with this guy, and I think this is my DS. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are gonna be like, man, there's only think a few things that Breeza hates, and it's grabbing the waist and inner finger locking. <laughs> and if people have been listening to me for 20 years, they definitely know that those are two things. It's not that common to finger lock in wrestling, though, like in the United States, because it just doesn't work very well. But anyway, uh, well, it does work, but it, it also breaks your fingers. So I thought that that was pretty good, man. I'm pretty impressed with how, how Gordon's wrestling has come along. Um, if if Pena wants to stay on his feet with him, that's going to be interesting. I mean, that was 40 minutes of very intense um, grappling there. And if Gordon can do that that hard for 40 minutes, then he can pace better if he wants to in a in a no time limit match. I saw a lot of classic wrestling. And then once he starts to refine his head position and a few other things, like if he does that Uchimata position, if he grabs the far arm so he can, you know, whip the guy over to his back, or if he goes to the sagging headlock from there, number of uh, things that they can do, you know, to just refine a few things, then I see some pretty awesome things coming out of him. So there's only one other thing I wanted to cover about push pull philosophy stuff. And it was something that John was showing. And I just want to, I want to teach it to you because it just came up in practice the other day when we were doing stuff. Um, and then I was, I was teaching some of the guys when we were there, you know, how do you get somebody to step? So all video long, I was showing how, you know, Gordon and Marigali and Luke, and they were doing this hand fighting kind of thing. Um, this is, you know, the handsy kind of thing. I, I you know how I feel about it. Uh, the reason I don't particularly like going to this position is, is John uses it to get to inside control and it's not really conducive to doing that it doesn't it's not any easier let's say it that way because especially on this left hand he has the exact same grip he has that thumb is in here and they're palm to palm if that guy doesn't feel like letting go then you're not getting your hand back and this isn't interlocking fingers which is better than what i was talking about with how the europeans do it but and then you know so it's not the same thing but it's still he's still got the same grip as you do and so you want to try to avoid doing those things in grappling because why would i give the guy the same move as me i want an advantage not an equal fight so then this hand this is better and it's sort of an overtie but it's not exactly what i showed on my video where i talk about you know why you're getting stuffed on your single leg your outside single and then how to fix it um when I do that, I, I let he pushes on my shoulder and it in this position, it allows me to get my thumb on the inside of his palm. And I have a much greater overtie than he has here. And then I push his hand down and into him. And it and I if you watch that video, I talk about it in great detail and it, and it causes sort of a wrist lock. And then the only way for him to get out is to roll his hand out. And then it gives me the outside single. But see, John's not doing that at all. He's using this to get. So he just lets go, right, and then gets inside control. So there really was, you know, it's kind of, in in my opinion, it's an inefficient, unnecessary step, okay? But either way, I don't want to spend that much time on it because that's not what I want to show anyway. It's just, so he gets to inside control, and you see how he's nicely forehead to forehead. This is what you want. This is good position. And then he pulls the guy, and he steps, and he shows it again. Now he drives forward, right, on that knee pull single. Very good. Very classic wrestling, okay? His head was in good position for the most part. Um, yeah, his head's in good position. His head's in good position. You see when he started off, he was forehead to forehead. He uses this uh, 
you know, his head in the in the shoulder ish area. He's got good back posture. Everything looks good. Hands right behind the right exactly the way we teach it in classic wrestling behind the tendon right there. Right. Drives. He's driving through. He's not pulling with his arm. He's driving through and then he pulls it and he's going to pinch it. Probably. Yep, he does. He pinches it perfectly like you're supposed to do. And then he gets hand hand lock, you know, hand grip perfect way. OK, everything looks good. I want to ask you something. How many of you have tried this? And if the guy's not pushing into you and he was leading this opposite leg forward, how many of you have had success with pulling him and getting him to come forward on this? Because I certainly haven't. So the technique looks really good, but it's missing a very critical component. And you have to be careful with this as a teacher because this, when you're teaching moves, when you're teaching technique and you're teaching the philosophy of the technique and conceptually why things work, all of these people sitting around watching are going to try to recapitulate exactly it is what you're showing. Now, I'm really fortunate that I had some of the best wrestling coaches in the world. And I picked up some really good stuff from him and my head coach too. And he was like a film buff and all this sort of stuff. And they watched people's reactions and they studied people's reactions. And what you see, if you study people, it has to be their idea to come forward in order for these moves to work. You will never pull somebody and get his leg to, to come forward like this unless his motion was already coming forward in the first place. So it has to be his idea. Now, how do you make it his idea? That's the real question. How do you do that? Because if he's just standing here and he's not pushing you, you'll never get him to pull it forward, particularly if he's leading his leg forward. So here's how you do it. You have to create motion. And inside control, it's not just for pulling. What it does, and actually conceptually, this is the whole purpose of inside control. And this is wrestling like straight up the, all, the whole way that wrestling works, judo works, all of these things, is, is I have to get him to push me by getting inside control and creating the push. He's got a good forehead position, and you drive this guy. And if you watch my video on traditional shots off the push, what I was trying to really communicate there, and maybe I should have spent more time on it, is that all my shots – all the throws, snap downs, everything requires that I get him to push me. I have to trick him into pushing me. And the way that I do it is I get inside control and I push, 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 push. And then most people, what they do is, is that they sort of take a bigger back step and they put the brake on because they have to do it. And then when they do, that's when you snap. That's when, that's when this works. But if he's not pushing you, you'll never get him to step that leg forward. And that's a very important detail that he wasn't showing. Obviously, wasn't there all day long, but I just want you to see it. Okay. I'm not criticizing him. I'm just showing you or telling you that if you're doing these things and you're just watching these tiny little video clips and you're not seeing him teach that you have to push people to the edge of the mat, essentially, and then they push back and you pull, right? This, this is philosophy of wrestling like 101, but usually people kind of fail to teach you it. And certainly BJJ people fail to teach it. And I didn't learn it really well until I went, you know, and was wrestling with Andy Saris. This is why you get inside control. A collar tie is across, you know, his collarbone. And the whole purpose of the collar tie is, is that he can't shoot on me. So it's the whole purpose of this is he can't shoot on me. He needs to get inside control so that he can control the push. But it's all going to come off me dictating what happens to him and him pushing me back. Now all of my shots come off of that. Now all my snap downs and all of those things come off of that. Okay, you're not just going to pull him like this and get him to step. All right, now the rest of it's great. You know, the way that he he puts his forehead in the chest and comes up with the knee pull single and all that kind of stuff. There's just nothing wrong with this technique at all. Okay, but but just so that you know that inside control is so that you can dictate where this guy goes on the mat. Now, if he doesn't push you back, because you could, in, in jiu-jitsu, there's no stalling, really, that or not really, like the rules. In wrestling, the rule sets say he has to push me back. And in freestyle, I could push him off the mat and get a point. So he's really going to push me back, right? And then most guys, what they'll do is they'll circle their hand back inside to inside control. And then that's how they'll pull, that's how they will push you back, right? So they're going to try to circle their hand back in to get to inside control. And most of them are doing it around the same time, right? They stop you and they're fighting for inside control at the same time. If he's not pushing you back, then you have to do other things like I showed on my channel about what to do when an opponent is stalling. And um, if he's stalling, if he's not pushing you at all, this won't work, right? You have to create him to push. And that's all I really wanted to talk to you about is, is that this push-pull philosophy, it sounds like it's a really simple concept, but it's kind of really everything. 
And we saw that earlier uh, when Gordon was uh, doing a good job with Marigali standing up, right? How he hips in and takes him to his back. You know, and then when he was uh, wrestling with Luke and Luke came into him and he wizard hard and lifted him up, that was all his idea, right? He wasn't just tossing some gigantic big guy around, right? And all those moves, judo, wrestling, they all require that you've got him to push. And so you have to create the push. That's what I'm really saying, right? You have to create it. And that's a, that's that takes a long time to learn. Like I said, I, I was in D1 before I really got good at that philosophy, right? I was doing it beforehand, but I didn't really understand it to that level. And so I hope that helps you. I hope you can learn from this. Um, you know, it's my main motivation is so you can take things away from this and then you can bring them into the practice room and you can play around with them and you can feel the difference between trying to pull somebody when they're standing there and then pulling them when they're pushing into you. And it's tremendous, the amount of difference, right? And then now you have to learn how to create that motion. And that's wrestling. And that's what makes it hard. That's also what makes it fun, though, because you can bait people into stuff. You know, you do something a few times and then they react a certain way and you're learning how they react. And then, you know, next time you switch it up a little bit or whatever, or you use their reaction against them. That's wrestling. That's how it works. So I hope that this helps you. Um, please feel free to leave comments, like and subscribe if you're new uh, to the channel or like if you like it anyway. <laughs> Share it with your friends if you like the material. And until next time, thanks for watching.